I obtained this Nintendo NES Advantage arcade style joystick and I wanted to find out what's inside, how all the features work, so I thought I would tear it down and reverse engineer it. In addition to having an arcade style layout and control mechanism, you can also optionally turn on a turbo feature for the two main buttons. It has two cable connectors on it and you can switch between player one and two. And there's also a slow motion button which basically quickly presses and releases the start button. So it only works on games that use the start button as pause. I don't have a working NES to plug this into and test it out, but I do have these controller extension cords I bought on eBay. So I'm gonna use the receptacle side of these and make an Arduino interface to read the joystick and display the button activity on some LEDs on a breadboard. To see how the standard NES controller works, DigiKey has printed an article from All About Circuits. The controller uses five out of the seven pins on the connector, and it's based on a 4021 CMOS 8-bit shift register. And this is a schematic of the controller. There's a total of eight buttons on the controller, up, down, left, right, select start, and then buttons B, A. Those eight buttons connect to ground, have pull-up resistors, and connect to the eight parallel inputs on the shift register. The whole circuit is powered from 5 volts, that comes from the NES console. The NES controls the clock and latch pins, so when latch goes high, the state of these buttons are latched in. Then the NES controls a clock to clock those 8 buttons into the NES on the data pin. Here's a timing diagram and a controller pinout diagram on this GitHub page. So the NES, or in my case, an Arduino Uno, is going to set the latch high to lock in the button states, start generating clocks, and read in the various switches as data. This is the sketch I came up with. So we set up the control pins for the NES. I have eight output LEDs. I configure all the pins as inputs or outputs, and then repeatedly in the loop, set the latch high, which locks in the button states, set it low again, and then go and read in all eight bits, storing them in the appropriate position of our data register, and then just go look through the data register and put each bit out on an LED representing the state of the buttons on the controller. Now if I dim the lights so we can see the LEDs better, I can test out all the buttons and see them show up on the Arduino LEDs. And if we turn on the turbo mode and hold the button down, we can see the switch keeps making and breaking contact on its own, and we can change the rate and observe it on the LEDs. And if we press the slow motion button, the LED representing the start button is rapidly turning on and off. Although it's not coming out so clear on the video, at least we can see the brightness appearing to go up and down as a representation of the change of state. Now let's take the joystick apart and see what's inside. We would expect to see the shift register circuit for the basic controller and three different oscillators where two are adjustable for the B and A buttons and one will be a fixed oscillator for the slow motion start button toggle. We can't really change the rate on that. These buttons are based on conductive pads that complete the circuit. There's the 4021 shift register IC we were expecting. And the only other IC is a 74HC04. And that's a hex inverter. So with six inverters on this one IC, we can make three oscillators easily out of this. Everything on here is through hole, big heavy circuit traces, and it has a bunch of these staple style jumpers. After studying the circuit for a while and tracing out some components, here's a partial schematic of what we have. The main controller would be right here with the 4021 shift register, eight input buttons. So these all have a push button circuit and a pull up resistor. And there's also pull up resistors on the clock, latch and data pins for the NES. The NES provides power and ground. In order to enable or disable turbo firing mode on the two buttons, or to enable slow motion by toggling the start button. The control switch is to turn those modes on and off, alternate between just connecting a regular push button to those inputs so they act normal, or it switches it to one of these three oscillators. 
So for the A button, when turbo mode is off, we just have the normal button to ground. When the turbo button is on, we have this oscillator automatically pressing the button repeatedly at an adjustable rate. So there's a 10K resistor and then a 1 meg pot, but also a 120K resistor in series with it. I didn't draw this completely. So this way, when the 1 meg pot is at its minimum resistance, we still have 120K here. Otherwise, we get up to 1 meg and 120K. And the capacitor is 120 nano. Both turbo buttons are the same. Then the slow motion feature simply has a fixed 160K resistor. Everything else is the same. Since the joystick supports two players and has two cables coming out to the NES, being just a single joystick, there's a switch between player one and two. What it does is simultaneously switch the clock and data pins between each connector, essentially disconnecting the one that switched off. Now that I know more about the schematic, if I probe the oscillator for the slow motion circuit, it's about 27.5 hertz. And when I look at the adjustable oscillators for the turbo buttons, they go down to about 5.5 hertz, and one of them can get up to 37 hertz, and one of them gets up to about 38 hertz. So that's between 5.5 to 37 or 38 button presses per second rapid fire. And I found this calculator for oscillator frequency based on this style of circuit. There's some info here, some equations, and if we plug in the values we have in our circuit, R, S, R, and C will be the 10K, the center resistor, whether it's fixed or adjustable, and 120 nano capacitor. So we'll keep these bottom parameters here fixed and general. We're running at 5 volts. Protection diodes will have a 0.6 volt drop. And let's say our logic switching threshold is 2.5 volts. With a 10K resistor and the 120 nano capacitor, if we have our 1 meg pot at minimum resistance, so we just have a 120K resistor, that calculates to about 31 and a half hertz. And we measured 37 to 38 hertz. Now, if we adjust our 1 meg pot to the maximum, so we have 1 meg plus 120K, that calculates out to 3.7 hertz, and we got 5.5 hertz. For our fixed oscillator, we have 160K, so when we plug that in, it calculates to 24 hertz, and we measured 27.5. So this seems like a reasonable tool to figure out what component values in this configuration result in what frequency. So that's what's inside the NES Advantage joystick, how it accomplishes its special features, and how we can read in an NES controller and use it to control any other circuit we want. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like content like this and want to be notified of future videos. I'll see you on the next video.